we're going to paint a dancing princess. Here's my hope you get joy while you paint. So let's get started with a dancing girl. And we're going to start with her an oval for her head and a long neck because our girl today is a dancer. Now she, I'm being inspired by a ballerina, but we can all be dancers, can't we? We don't have to be ballerinas. We could be dancing right where we are, in our living room, at home, outside. I want to make sure I have the right proportions, so this is the length of my head. And neck is the same as my torso. Okay, here our dancer is going to be sort of leaning down here. Maybe I want to exaggerate this a little bit more. Leaning down. This arm is going to be up. And we're going to want this arm to reach. We're going to stretch. Draw her arm up. And the crook of her arm, the bend at her inside of her elbow, is going to be right here at the top of her head. So we kind of get our proportions right. There's our, bring this down, and she's stretching up. And look at it's a little too wide. We can shave it off. And these are very slender. You see that's like a very slender triangle. And this is going to come down here. And I'm not worried too much about making it perfect. I just don't want this to get skinny and weak at this part. It's going to be skinny anywhere. It should be right about. It should be kind of even at this point right here. Okay? Parallel to each other. A little wider at the base, but parallel. Okay, and the top of this, your arm, gets a little narrower towards your hand. And let's put this arm stretched out in front here and bent, bent away. And she is twirling. Oh boy. Twirling and having an amazing time. And let's put a beautiful skirt on her and because this side is up, let's make this side up and this side down. Very good. Okay, we're going to keep her hands simple. It's very small, so we can't do a lot of detail anyways. So this is the top of the fingers. Here's going to be the thumb. Okay, take your hand and put the palm, the bottom of your, um, just at your wrist, above your wrist, on your chin, and then feel where your fingertips touch. So it's in the, it should be about the middle of your forehead. So here's the middle of the forehead. So if I take and measure from the middle of my forehead to here, that's how long my hand should be. So now I can measure this. This is my hand, and I'm just going to add a little bit more. So at least I have the length right. So I want to just create that simple hard to see. I drew a couple times. Simple hand there. I don't want it to get too big. I want it to come to a point. So my hand's going to kind of follow that curve. I'm 
just kind of try to be graceful. It's more important that we are graceful She is just kind of swinging around here. Okay, so here is her body and her torso. So her hips are under here. And this hip, this foot is going to be down. Right here, do you see how that comes down? And we're going to put, she's going to be on her toe. Spinning on her toe. And we're not going to show her leg because it's under her pretty dress, but here's her. And then this leg is going to be back here. I want to keep it on my paper, so maybe I'll pull it down a little bit. And our proportions of our feet are different than our hands. Our, let's remove this, our feet are as long as our head is long, high. So let me measure here. Feet should be longer. We don't want our feet to be weak feet. We want them to hold, be able to hold us up. So let me draw it longer. There we go. Those are going to hold. Those feet will hold this up. Okay. So here she is. Now she is spinning around. And this is the back of her head. And this would be her ear here. The back of her ear. And we need to put a hairdo in. So what kind of hairdo are we going to do? Is she going to have her hair up here on her head? Is she going to be a princess and put a crown around it? That would be nice. We remove this. A few curls flying around. I guess there's no curls flying around if you're a ballerina. But we could do that, or her hair could be spinning. Kind of like the idea of a bun back here, something in her hair. And the crown does look pretty up there. Let's try it without the bun inside of it. Yeah, I like that. See that profile? That's better. Okay, but let's give her a bow on the back of her dress that is flowing. So I'm just going to, how would this be spinning out the ribbons on this bow? Let's make, we're going to have to have it a... big bow with the big knot and here are the ribbons coming out I have it kind of flipping over make S curves to keep it graceful we have those blowing almost right off the our paper. We're kind of limited on how long those ends of our bow can be. And that will be give us a lot of movement. Her arms are moving this way. Her bow is moving that way and she's doing just a lovely move of some kind, rhythmic move and having a great time. So let's put a little layer here on her skirt so that her dress has a little bit of um, interest. Now this was our line from our legs, so 
it's not important. So let's give her um, maybe some scalloped layer of some kind of filmy dress. And let's kind of just bring the ends like these are have little crenellation in and out and that this is the, will be the back of the dress and we'll just give her a little neckline back there and a little curve in for the shoulder so this won't we won't see this I'm going to take that out this is our little neckline and let's put some little buttons down the back Alrighty, I think we're ready to ink it in. And once again, I'm just going to use a fine point ballpoint pen. And you kind of have to test it out to make sure that whatever ballpoint pen you use, it is good enough that it doesn't, when you go like this, and when I erase over it, it's not going to smear. thought about it a little bit and I'm looking here at what I did when I was kind of sketching and it sort of looks like I made her bun into a rose so what I'm thinking is that our girl is dancing in a rose garden and we say when we talk about a rose garden, um, sometimes a rose garden is sort of a state of mind a, we, where we are happy. And we can make ourselves be happy wherever we are in whatever situation we're in. We can be happy by being grateful. So I am going to imagine that this young lady is grateful and has a grateful heart for all the wonderful things that she has. Okay, so now I'm going to start painting and I think I'm going to use some beautiful bright colors, beautiful bright reds, and try and get as many bright tones on our dancer and her outfit. So I want this dress to, or this bow to be the brightest portion of her outfit and it's just easier for me to turn this as I'm doing it and when I'm doing a small area I try to hold the brush straight up and down so I'm just using the point 
and when I'm doing a large area I can tip it to the side and use the side of the brush to fill in a wide area. So the bow has a lot of little small curves and dips so I want to stay within the lines here. But I want to give it a tiny bit of shadow down here. So I'm just going to, should probably come back and do that later when it's not so wet. Okay, now let's come up with a little bit lighter tone for down here. I want to make sure I don't touch that. Oh, while it's wet. So if I go up here in this little corner, I use, I barely press on the tip of the brush so I can use just the point of the brush, but when I come down here, I can use the side of the brush and fill it in quickly. Slide it, because I want my this area to be all wet at the same time, and that will give me a nice, a very nice, smooth, area of paint. There won't be any brush strokes seen. Okay, and I just want to take here, and this is going to be real subtle, I'm just going to put a little bit of dark right up under here, and this will just make it look like the there's a little bit of a touch of a shadow here, as if this layer of the dress is just lifting a little bit while she's swirling. And I'm going to leave that and let it dry for a little bit and I'm going to paint in her hair. I think I'm going to give her some brown hair. And put in this bow this um, bun. Now I did end up making that bun look like a rose, but I'm not sure if I want to paint it a rose color. What color? What are you? What would you paint yours? Hmm. I'm going to leave it for now. I do want to paint in my crown. I can paint it, and I think I'm going to paint it a kind of golden color. It's a little too orange. I think I'm going to get a little... There you go. It's fun to have a gold crown make us feel as special as we possibly could. And I can make my flesh tone. And I make flesh tone. You usually don't find flesh tone, a flesh tone in your paints. But I make mine with a little bit of pink magenta color and add a touch of yellow, a warm color to it, and a lot of water. So I'm mixing it up and I'll test it over here. Might need a little more water. But what you can do is I'll put it on here if it's too dark. I can just add some more water. But she is dancing and her blood is pumping and so I'm sure her blood is racing. Oh, I just grabbed some more pink. A little bit too much. She's going to match her. She'll be matching her. I'll mix it in. Let's get some. Now you're just going to have to, with everything, experiment with making a little color. Try it out. And 
um, watercolors as they dry they get lighter so if you put a color in that's a little too bright you can lift a little color by just cleaning out your brush and touching it going back over it especially if you've used a good paper um, you always want to use the very best paper you possibly can get and if it's a special treat to spend money on good paper but it is going to make you very happy that you did spend the money on it because good paper works with you and for you and cheap paper low quality paper has its place it's good to use for writing stories for using crayon uh, some markers but watercolor needs a good heavy paper this is a hundred and forty pound watercolor paper and that's um, a very common paper you can find in the stores in the Joann's and Michael's and the paint and hobby stores around and you want to get that at least a hundred and forty pound and the better it is the heavier it becomes so it goes up to say 300 pounds so anywhere between 140 and 300 would be good but 140 is totally satisfactory for what we're doing so I'm just going with a color scheme here and sticking to it um, I like this not very imaginative so far but I think we will get imaginative as we go along so I'm going to put some little detail in here and keep the dress very simple because our girl is dancing in a rose garden so all around her is going to be a lot of amazing color and lots of wonderful textures and flowers and plants and leaves and maybe we'll put in some butterflies and birds who knows what we'll do but I think I want to keep her very simple so maybe I'll just put a little wetness on here not going to touch the paint that's already on there and just gently touch a tiny little bit of paint on here to make a suggestion of maybe a tiny little pattern on the dress and I, like I said I want it to be simple and a simple little contrast to what I'm going to be doing maybe make these buttons a little pink just a soft pink there. you don't want to overdo just sometimes simple is better now I wanted to say something about making things perfect I'm looking here and her leg I see should maybe be over here farther and I'm not going to tear this up or scribble over this or throw it out. I'm just going to work with it and next time be a little more careful to bring her leg over where it actually should be. So if something goes wrong with your picture, don't destroy it and say forget it. I'm not going to keep going. Just keep going and persevere and use this as a time to learn. We all need to learn, we all make mistakes, so don't stop, just keep going with your painting or whatever you're doing. Keep going, don't give up because there's a little imperfection. It's, it makes me so sad when someone's, I've seen one of my students um, get discouraged because they've made a little mistake. Just keep going. We all make mistakes. It's okay. It's fine. 
no one actually is going to notice but you. So um, don't worry about anybody else or um, let it stop you from doing what you want to do and reaching your goals. So here's our girl and now I'm going to start painting in my background. I think I am finished with my painting of this lovely dancing girl who is dancing for joy and because she has a grateful heart. Actually today is Valentine's Day and I just want to acknowledge that I am so grateful for so many things in my life that if I could I would jump into this picture with this young lady and dance for joy for all the wonderful things I am so grateful for. So I hope you can have many things to be grateful for too and that you have an amazing day and thank you for painting with me at Mimi's Sketchbook. <music>